Hello everybody, this is Megan Erickson helping you out with session 26. This week's session is talking about the prophets like we had talked about in session 21, except this time they're pointing towards the Messiah in the messages that we're bringing. Let's start in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the time we have to learn about you and about how you always seek after us, Lord. Thank you for the messages in scripture. Thank you for giving us understanding of what they mean. And uh, thank you for the mentors who are in these students' lives. Bless them as they seek to honor you and serve you in raising up disciples. God, I thank you for these students and for uh, the way that you are equipping them to go out in the world and serve you. And I pray that as we study together today, that you would bless them and give them excitement for what they're learning. Uh, and I pray that you would give them people to discuss with, to really understand what these messages are and how they point to Jesus Christ. We thank you for this time again and pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. For building block 10, we're answering the question, who is Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ is the Son of God, fully human and fully divine, the promised Messiah who came into the world to redeem people from sin and establish his kingdom on earth. Matthew 16, 15 through 16 says, Then he asked them, But who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And we'll be talking a little bit about what Messiah truly means. And our key verse comes from John chapter 1, verse 14. I'll have you pause the video and look that up in your Bibles. Our focus point is the prophets told of a Messiah, a person anointed by God, who would bring good news to the poor and needy, and in peace and security to the world. I'll have you also pause the video and look up these additional scripture verses. So we have three verses in Isaiah, a couple verses in Luke, part of some verses in Matthew, and then a verse in Hebrews. I have um, some pictures here of some friends, and I am really excited because when they moved away to Texas in November, I didn't know how long it would be until I would get to see them again. So let me introduce them. Um, off to the left here, uh, this is my friend Ana Rosa. And then in this next picture of the four of us, this is my husband Mitchell, and then Ana Rosa and her husband Daniel. So um, the four of us are really, really close. And it was really hard having them on it, Honorosa and Daniel move away, especially when they moved so far. Uh, Mitchell and I were supposed to go down and visit them in January to drop off a car that they left here, but that didn't work. And uh, we will be able to visit them in June. So I'm really looking forward to that. I'm really excited. Um, and I'm asking you the question what are you looking forward to? And how does having something that you're looking forward to change your perspective on the day to day. Well, God promised through the prophets a Messiah for the Israelites. And in all of their trials, the prophets were able to point to the coming king. Having something to look forward to really helps us get through the tough times. And this is the prophet's hope. Throughout Old Testament times, the Israelites went through a pattern of, as you've been learning, disobeying God, facing the consequences, repenting, and experiencing God's rescue. God provided prophets to show the Israelites the way back to him. What messages did the prophets give? Well, you can read these below. Just a summary of the different messages that they gave. If you want, you can pause the video. And uh, through those, they, they brought their hope, not just uh, knowledge of God's judgment or um, condemning certain practices. It wasn't just pointing out what was wrong, but 
as we're learning, they brought hope too. So pause the video here. Talk with your family. What is hope? How could you define that? You can talk about how you've felt hope in your lives. And then when are the times that you need hope the most? Well, the Israelites sure needed hope. You can know that without a doubt. They had experienced generations of war, division, and exile. But the prophets told them of a day where there would be no more violence or war, no more suffering, no more sadness. The prophets spoke of the coming king, the anointed one, the Messiah of God, who would fulfill God's promises and the hopes of God's people. Isaiah prophesied in chapter 2, verse 4, The Lord will settle international disputes. All the nations will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. All wars will stop and military training will come to an end. Isn't that a comfort to know that that will happen someday in the midst of all the trials in the world? That is truth. The Lord will settle the disputes. And then in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 7, he says, He told of a king whose ever-expanding peaceful government will never end. He will rule forever with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David. You can imagine that that prophecy would be a huge encouragement to the Israelites. Now, the name Messiah is important here. And maybe you picked it up on one of the first slides when we talked about anointing. Uh, but it does mean a person who has been anointed with oil. In these times, the priest poured oil over the head of the new king during his coronation or his crowning. This symbol of God's presence with the new king gave him the blessings of wisdom and strength for excellent leadership. So the Israelites in this time would understand what Messiah means. It held more meaning than just a singular name. And of course, it was Christ the Messiah who fulfilled countless prophecies in the Old Testament. So let's explore those. Take out a piece of paper. You'll pause this video and choose four pairs of scripture to read, and then you'll write down the prophecy which Jesus fulfilled. So for example, you'll read the prophecy like in Isaiah 9, 7, and then read the fulfillment, Luke 1, 32 through 33. And then on that paper, you'll write down the prophecy that Jesus had fulfilled. Just a simple phrase. You could do four. You could do all of them. If you're curious, I have some more that I could send out to you if you want to see more of those prophecies. And think about how as Christians, we're able to tie in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Jesus bridged the gap and he fulfilled those prophecies for the Jews of his time period. And then also for us today to see that he is the coming king. He is the Messiah. Now for next week, you'll be reading about how God prepared the world for Jesus coming. And as I've always been encouraging you to do, please pray for your classmates that they spend time in God's word um, and that you would spend time with God daily. In this last year, things, things have been crazy out in the world with the coronavirus. I'm not sure how many of you um, hear political news. Um, we know that there's racial unrest, um, just discrepancies in how people are being treated. There's a lot to pray about, um, and there is a lot that God is doing. God is moving in this time, without a doubt. But if we're wanting to follow Christ and follow the Holy Spirit's leading in our lives, we need to know how to identify what God is saying to us. And to do that, we need to know what God's voice sounds like, and that comes through studying the Word. Um, talk with your mentor about this if you haven't before. See how they spend time with God daily. It's more than just um, listening to your favorite songs, spending time in nature if you feel close to him. Those things are wonderful, um, but we need to see what's written in God's word. So I just always encourage you to spend time in the word. Thank you so much for listening to me these several sessions throughout the year. It's been awesome getting to work through this with you guys. Uh, I'll be praying for you as the school year wraps up, and uh, I hope you're blessed. Thanks so much for listening. Bye.